Welcome back to the News at 10. Two Caverton helicopter pilots have been remanded in prison by a Port Harcourt magistrate court for allegedly violating the executive order issued by the River State Governor aimed at checking the spread of coronavirus in the state. According to the Flight Crew Association of Nigeria, the pilots were operating essential oil and gas services. Now, following their arrest, the River State Governor Nyesom Wike has declared that he is willing to testify against persons who violate the state's border closure regulations. The governor who was speaking at the office of the River State Commissioner of Police insisted that the pilots illegally transported expatriates to the state. In a reaction to the incident, Caverton Helicopters said the company and their clients have exemption approvals to fly and continue operations in the oil and gas industry. There's been an increase in death, the death toll from the COVID-19 pandemic in the U.S. and some countries in Europe. More than 10,000 people have died in France following an increase of 607 deaths in 24 hours. 786 people in the U.K. have died in hospital, raising their death toll to 6,159. And New York has recorded its highest single-day increase in deaths at 731, raising the total to 5,489. Meanwhile, China says it has no new coronavirus deaths. Let's take a look at some business news. And here's Kayode Okikulu. Thank you, Ijema, and you're welcome to Business News. The International Monetary Fund says it is considering Nigeria's request for $3.4 billion in emergency funds to counter the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on Africa's biggest economy. The IMF Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva, says in a statement that the institution was working hard to respond to the request to enable consideration of the proposal by the executive board as soon as possible. The IMF chief acknowledged that Nigeria's economy was threatened by both the shocks of COVID-19 pandemic and a sharp fall in global oil prices. Nigeria's Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, on Monday mentioned that the federal government had requested a total of $6.9 billion from the IMF and other multilateral lenders. And the federal government says it will release the donations made regarding the eradication of COVID-19 based on exigencies of demand. According to a statement from the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, proceeds of the donations, which now stand at 19.4 billion naira, will be released to the Presidential Task Force on Control of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation has announced names of five commercial banks where such financial support could be paid into. They include Zenith Bank, Axis Bank, GT Bank, First Bank of Nigeria and United Bank for Africa. One of Nigeria's foremost financial institutions, FBN Holdings, is reporting a 6.4% rise in gross earnings to 627 billion naira. And that's for the 2019 calendar year. The figures which have been made available on the website of the Nigerian Stock Exchange shows a 26% surge in post-tax profit to 73 billion naira. Key performance drivers include the 442 billion gains in interest income, as well as a 290 billion naira growth in net interest income. A further breakdown of the statement shows that the company's tax was calculated based on the provisions of the 2020 Finance Act, just as the group makes plans to divest the entire 65% stake in FBN insurance. And now to the stock markets. Renewed interest for the shares of MTN Nigeria, Lafarge and some key bank stocks lifted the stock market by 1.2% at the close of today's trading session, making its biggest gain since March the 3rd. Bisi Adebayo has the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Markets Report. The equities market had a slow start to the week by 2.02%, plunging the old share index into the 20,000 psychological position after a heavy sell down on industrial giants Dangote Cement and Bois Cement. Activity level rose beyond the 30-day average with over 336 million units of shares traded for 4.1 billion naira in 4,184 deals, a dominant on the top trade chart of the banking names which helped to moderate losses for this session. With a positive market breadth of 21 gainers to 13 losers, Access Bank took the lead ahead of ICO, 
while Kitix, Learn Africa and Naco were the biggest losers, down by 10% apiece. And that's it on the stock market reports. I am BC Adibayo. And outside the country, U.S. stock markets ended Tuesday's trading session broadly negative, giving up the rally which was recorded in Monday's session. Here are some of the figures from the U.S. and other parts of the world. Well, thank you for watching Business News Tonight. I am Kayode Okikulu. It's back to Ijeoma on the news at 10. Thanks a lot, Kayode. As part of ongoing efforts in the fight against coronavirus, commercial poultry production operator Animal Care has donated relief materials, including chickens, eggs and water, to residents of Ogun State. The executive director of the company, Adewale Adeni, who led the team, says the gesture is their own contribution to ensure the welfare of the residents while the lockdown directive by the presidency lasts. It's just a few days into the stay-at-home order in Ogun State. Animal Care Services Consult Limited is, however, providing some palliatives to cushion the effect on the residents. The company is donating chickens, eggs and water to the Ogun State Government and some communities in the state for about 250 households targeted at the aged and the vulnerable. We are compelled, seeing also the, the effort of the state government in fighting this uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, their effort in providing uh, palliative measures to people that will be staying at home that will not be able to go out and earn their daily living. We know that majority of our citizens, they, they, they live by the day. They earn their living on a daily basis. And because they will be forced to stay at home, means they will not be able to earn their living. And they will have to eat. So some people will have to come to their aid. That's why we are compelled to give this. And because we also trust the state government to ensure that it will get to the actual people that will be needing it. Receiving the items on behalf of the state government, the senior special assistant to the governor on health, Dr. Lolade Kendi, commends the company for the gesture. The assurances are very candid and straightforward that His Excellency has made it a priority to ensure that all these goods not just get to the comfortable but the vulnerable. For now, daily activities may have been affected but these donations are expected to aid coronavirus relief efforts in Ogun State. The redeemed Christian Church of God has extended its support in the fight against coronavirus to the Ogun State government. At the presentation of the medical kits, the Assistant General Overseer, Administrator and Personnel of the RCCG, Pastor Johnson Odeshola, says the equipment will assist the state government to attend to more patients. Barely a week after its donation to the Lagos State Government, the redeemed Christian Church of God is now extending a hand of support to the Ogun State Government in the fight against the spread of coronavirus in the state. Mindful of the rising cases of COVID-19 in the country, the church is giving out some medical equipment from the intensive care unit of the Redeemer's Health Center located within the Redemption Camp. The occasion of the official handover of this medical equipment to the state is part of the contribution of the leadership of RCCG to government effort to control the spread of COVID-19 in the state. Now, redeem Christian Church of God in Ogwe alone has an excess of over a million congregants. And we made effort as church to be sure that we reach to our members some essentials. The Deputy Governor of Ogun State and the State Commissioner for Health are on hand to receive the items and also appreciate the church for its support. If our patients do develop respiratory failure, these pieces of equipment will become invaluable to saving lives in this country. And I'm very happy that the church is supporting us in this aspect. 
these are pieces of equipment that you cannot get for money or for gold these days. Everybody in the world is looking for them. I would also like to thank them for providing the personal protective equipment for the frontline workers because daily we face people that we don't even know if they have COVID or not and when we don't have these protective covers then there is the risk that health workers actually become casualties as well. Some of the medical equipment donated by the RCCG include two ventilators, two ICU beds, two infusion pumps, one vital signs monitor and one sanctioning machine. Still ahead on the news at 10, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson reportedly in good spirits after spending the night in intensive care undergoing treatments for COVID-19. And more from our London Bureau in Around the World in 5. Do stay with us.